Willow right now. Yeah. Coming to you live from the dungeons. I am Coast. This is episode 8 of the motherfucking Prime Podcast. I am here with my host. What's your name, bro? Fats the Assassin. What's going on, man? Hey, guy. How are you today? I'm chilling, man. How are you? I'm all right, man. I mean, I couldn't be better. Right off top, we got a special guest on the phone right now. My homie, Big Chief Smash, underground rapper from the Bronx, New York. And he is an actual person I know that has the coronavirus. So we're going to bring him on right now. Hello. Hello. What's good? Yo. Big Chief Smash, what's good, man? How you fellas doing today? Chilling, man. Better than you. <laughs> Better than me. Goddamn right. <laughs> so, I mean, I, I mean, I'm on the internet all day looking at shit, and they, hey, fucking, I'd say 75 percent of my friends list thinks this is a hoax and that nobody has the coronavirus. And I was just talking to my man, and he was like, "I have the Rona." So I'm like, as a matter of fact, let's talk about that. So, yo, tell us, what, where did it come from? What does it feel like? What, what's up, man? So for those that are not in the know, there's about eight known strains floating around, right? <clears throat> you know, the, 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 the most aggressive of which are obviously the ones that put, uh, you know, old folks at risk, things like that. Uh, for me, I tend to have a lot of the symptoms minus any real attack on my respiratory system. And I'm prone to like upper respiratory infections, but this ain't that this time around. For what it's been for me, um, for the past four days, extreme fatigue, um, body aches, like I just got my ass whooped, um, nausea, vomiting. Um, what else? Um, oh, you know, one of the big uh, tell-alls for it is the uh, the loss of smell and taste. So I can't taste a goddamn thing right now. I can't smell anything. Fucking eating tacos. I might as well just been chewing rocks. It's nothing. Really, bro? Like nothing? Nothing. It's just- nothing. It's, just, it's, it's fucking texture. It's nothing. I was can barely the first, taste the hot sauce. What was that the first thing to go, or does that happen like last? When is that coming? That's been about like three days now. The taste of shit. How yeah. long have you been having this shit? I've, I've been having about a five day fever with incredible migraines. B, like it's it sucks. So, <laughs> so when you when what was the first thing that made you feel like you needed to go get tested? Uh, about three days straight with a fever. That's what made me reach out to a doctor. How high? Oh, uh, about 102 consistently. I can bring it down to maybe like 100, but never below that. Mm. Wow. And what were, you th- what, what were you What were you taking like when you were trying to bring it down? Oh, just acetaminophen, just like, you know, 500 milligrams, but like, okay. you know, about two or three doses at once. Because usually, when, you know, when you, you get admitted to the hospital, they give you way higher dosages than, you know, the extra strength shit. So I have no problem popping even more. Right. Oh, man. And what what is your fever at now? Is it going down? Well, 101. I just I just checked. Jesus wow. Christ. Yeah. That, that was after six acetaminophen about two hours ago. Dude, I if I took six acetaminophens, I'd have to go to the hospital. My fucking <laughs> I shit water when I eat them fucking things. Yeah, like that, yeah, that shit is harsh on stomach. your stomach. That shit is harsh yeah. on your stomach. Well, what happened is um they they when they when they the first thing, because I, I called the the one eight hundred hotline. <laughs> Mm-hmm. Just to see what they were talking about. And when you call the 1 800 hotline, the first thing they ask you is if you have a fever. That's the first thing they ask you. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> Secondly, they ask you uh, if you have a cough, if you have like a dry cough. Um, after that, then they ask you if you have um, any type of breathing difficulty. So if you have any, if you don't have any of that going on, they basically dismiss you and tell you, like, listen, call your primary care physician and and they send you about your business. But the first thing they're looking for is the fever. So like you said, no, you had the so, fever you had the fever yeah. three days in a row. Yeah. So so I think what, what's happening now is it's like a like a pre triage method. What they're doing is basically treating everybody's symptoms like it could potentially be it, because you're gonna spread it the same way, right? 
Right. Um, I've got three very close friends, dear friends that are in the nursing field now that are at home sick with it, with my exact same symptoms. And the doctors are all telling them like, yo, don't even leave your house unless you are struggling to breathe, stay indoors because they're not going to bother testing you for coming in with just a fever. Like they want to make sure that uh... the limited kits that are available are reserved for people that are actually in their worst case, because right. those are going to be the people that they actually have time to treat and the resources right, to treat. Right. I mean, you, you've seen what's going on with some of the hospitals here. Like they've got no space in the morgue. Like they're putting them in refrigerated trucks. Right, right, right. That's crazy. Man, that shit is. That shit scares the fucking shit out of me, dude. So, I'm gonna be honest so, with you. So now here's the here's the thing. If you backtrack to 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 like figuring out like. The transmission? Could you could you like pinpoint that? Probably. I mean, I can only you know theorize at this point because I've been careful. That's the thing. Like, if my daughter and I leave the apartment, it's only to to go get groceries, and that's really it. Like, we haven't even done like the hey, you know, take an exercise walk that's allowed or whatever. Right. We've only left the place to get food when we needed it, and that's right. it. And you know, at any point, it's like. You, you can't even fathom where I could have gotten it from at that point. We were super careful and I still caught it. Right, right, right. And it, you know, the funniest thing is that when they say that like the <clears throat> ju- the gestation period for it is between two and 14 days, it's like mm-hmm. ba- basically you have to backtrack like two weeks or, right. or even more sometimes maybe, you know, you have to backtrack and, and say to yourself, like, what have I been doing and who have I been con- in contact with for the last two weeks you know yeah i think the only flaw in like my security method here was like maybe packages that came from ups or stuff like uh, that like, actually, i think maybe like well third or fourth day and i was like maybe i should be lysoling these shits before i even open them just let them right. sit right there on the floor for a few minutes right that's the only right. thing i can think of man. right you know it's yeah. crazy that i mean I'm crazy, but that like I got my my entire front landing in the front of my house, Fats. You know where you came in there in the front right. door there, right? Right. It's just full of Amazon boxes and packages that my wife orders, and I won't bring them in the house. But then like I'll get groceries and just fucking chow down like a fat slob with the package in my hand. So, well, that's see, not good. <laughs> the 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 thing that I've been doing my myself personally because there's no foolproof method, and I even read a. I read an article today they that I, I got in an email and the article said that we're basically when we wear gloves to the supermarket, we're actually in danger of transmitting the disease faster than using just your bare hands. Because they're saying that you can't it it can't get into your system just on your hands. You have that's why they're encouraging you to wash your hands on a regular basis and not touch your face because most of your mu- mucous membranes and entry is through your mm-hmm. eyes, through your nose, and through your mouth. Right? Yeah. yeah, right, right. So, and you know what's so funny is I, I I think I told you, Coach, it was so funny because when this whole thing jumped off, I kind of like realized how many times I touch my face in a day when I stopped touching my face. I was like, I was like, what right. the hell, man? I was like, yo, I didn't know that I had the urge to touch my face this many times in a day. You know what I mean? That's true. That's true. It's crazy. Yeah. You should stop doing that now. Well, I've been stopped doing that. But what I'm just saying is, <laughs> you know, now I like I, I went to Target yesterday. I went to Target yesterday and I went to the supermarket and got some things. You know, I had to... Uh, Hey, I got some toilet paper. <laughs> wow. I got, I, got some, shot. I got some toilet paper and some uh some some uh paper towels. It was crazy. But anyway, Dude, this guy bragging over here. Wow. Good for you, man. <laughs> yeah, Must but, be nice. But uh anyway, I went to the I went to Target and I went to the supermarket. And I basically when I came back, I kind of like I I I Lysol like I Lysol wiped everything that I bought <laughs> just as a precaution. <laughs> You know what I mean? Because like you said, Coast, you get the food and you start chowing down and touching your face and everything else. You don't even know if the person that packed that food or put that stuff on the shelf had, you know, contaminated whatever they touched. You know what I'm saying? I don't yeah, yeah, I don't even have Lysol wipes, so I'm fucked. I'm basically done. 
Yeah, when you really sit down and think about it, you can probably pinpoint a thousand different ways that you know you could get it that you're not being careful enough. Yeah, but that's I mean, the scary part of it. That's the scary part of it. That's the and then that's there's the, the misinformation too. There's a lot of misinformation right. out there about what what how you can get it, which ways you can get it. I mean, you right. know, ten minutes ago they were talking about like, oh, we can live on your clothing for like ten minutes. Now they're like, oh, nine hours. Now it's like several days. Right. Right. You know, and. You know, not what, all of us have wait. landings in front of our houses where we can leave packages to disinfect. <laughs> wait a minute. So yeah. they so they're saying that the that it can li- it can live on your clothes for several days now. Yeah, they're saying nine days. At least the last time I checked, it, it could have wow. changed like right now. There's so much different information out there. They were saying it's it's it, it can be airborne. You know, floating in the air for a little bit. You know, up to like what like like half a block if somebody sneezes. Some crazy shit. Like they always half come out block. with. Yo, Something ridiculous, <laughs> something oh. ridiculous, and then and then yeah, your biggest point of vulnerability, unless you're in a full face mask, is your eyes. Right, most definitely. Because... I gotta get some shades. Right. <laughs> the fuck. Well, I mean, yeah, that's the, the whole point of it. The whole point of it is, uh, you know, we there, there's information and then there's misinformation, and I think that most of the fear and the paranoia that's going on out there is because a lot of people are are dealing with misinformation, you know, like the whole thing about, um, uh, ibuprofen exacerbating it. You know what I mean? It's like, that was blown way out of proportion. Like, yeah, ibuprofen maybe doesn't help because it's not a fever reducer. And the main, the the medication you want is a fever reducer, right? But it's not going to kill you. It's just, you know, you're just taking some shit that ain't helping. Yeah. But that's what I'm saying. They got people in a, in a frenzy and an uproar, like, Oh my God, if you take Advil, it's going to kill you. You know what I mean? So it's like, it's not, it's not that serious. The first thing that I do whenever I see anything where they talk about drugs, is go to the CDC, go to the FDA, go to the WHO, go to these places that are on the front line of this thing, you know, that are dealing with it on a front line basis and see what they say before exactly. you go off of just off of like a meme or, or, or some kind of viral uh, uh, article that you read. You know what I mean? Some conspiracy fucking, you know, GIF image. <laughs> Absolutely. My, my, my favorite one right now is the is the uh, the train car with COVID-19 printed on the side of it. Like, oh, man, they would have gotten away with it if they didn't label the train car with the virus. Absolutely. <laughs> you know I mean? But, you know, again, like for you being a person that was diagnosed mm-hmm. with it, uh, how long have you been dealing with this? Like right now, like confirmed, like, you know, confirmed right now. I mean, how, how long have I been sick or how long since it was sick. confirmed? S- since uh, it was, since about you- a, almost five days, full, five full days. And it's it was, like trash. And it was confirmed how many days ago? Like two. Okay. So, I, so, so they're saying that basically it's like a 14 day thing, right? Yeah, like like they're they think what they've started with, you know, at least what they've kept going is, you know, some sort of self containment for at least two weeks. Right. And that way there's no other form of transmission after it dies out. As long as you stay to yourself and then any surface it touches, it's gonna die out on eventually within that fourteen day period. Right, right, right. So so basically what have you been like what have you been doing? Have you just been like resting? Yeah, I try to as much as possible, but you know, I'm a single parent, so I gotta, you know, take care of the school and things in, in the morning, right. make sure she stays on top of that. Right. And then, you know, like glove up, mask up, make sure I don't expose her as much as possible. Even though this hasn't really been affecting children that much, right. you know, I wanna be cautious just in case she can be like a, a carrier with no symptoms, but then right. spread it to someone else some sometime down the line. You know what I mean? Well, how's she feeling? Yeah. Oh, she's good. She I mean, you you know, if, if she has anything, you wouldn't know it. But right, as right. far as I can tell right now, we're good. Oh, great, man! Great. <clears throat> yeah, this shit is fucking scary, man. I, I, cause the way my brain works is like worst case scenario possible. Like I wouldn't have just the regular version that you have right now. I'd have the one that kills you in twenty four hours in my <laughs> brain. So <clears throat> I, it is. I, I'm sure for many people that are listening to this right now, as much as it sucks for you right now, it's 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 reassuring that you're not gonna drop dead instantly, like. You know what I'm saying? You're probably making a lot of people feel better that you're even on here talking and, you know, being able to conduct yourself even this much with it, you know? I mean, I don't want to in any way take away from how serious it could be. I think that's yeah. that's a dangerous approach to take, but definitely reassuring people like, look, yeah, it's got 
a possibility of, you know, uh, of, of being very serious for some folk, but for the most of us that do catch it, you know, we'll get over it. It's not going to be that bad, but you still don't want to put people at risk because there's potential for it to be awful. Well, definitely, man. You, you know, the, the, the thing you, you just touched on something that's very, uh, very profound that they're not, that they're not really saying is that is many different strains of it. That's not right. what they're talking about. Like they're talking about it as just one particular thing that's out there. You know what I mean? Yeah, right, right. You know, the media hype train only really focuses on one story at a time. So they right, just you right, know pick right. the two little details and run with that. Yeah. So, I mean, a lot of people are not even understand. Like, and it's funny because I just talked to a couple of people yesterday and it's funny because it's like, even if you're in a public space and let's say you have to clear your throat or, you know, you, you, you people cough. Coughing is a natural mechanism of your body. You never know why you cough. You could in, inhale something that tickles your throat and makes you cough. That's a right. natural reaction that your body has. But the thing about it is, is a lot of people are in public right now and they're like so afraid to cough. You know what I mean? Because it's like frowned upon if you cough or you sneeze. or And the funniest thing is I just told Coast, I was like, if you feel your throat tickling and you sneeze, you know, it is allergy season as well. Yeah, I was just about to say that. Yeah, <laughs> peak allergy season. Yeah, it's like- yeah I've, I've been fucking coughing all the, like for the last fucking few days. No fever, but I cough like just because I'm fat, I think. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, man. It, it, it's nerve wracking, this shit, dude. I don't know about you, but I have like w- really bad anxiety about everything. So I, this is this would not be good to have for me. <laughs> I would lose it. Yeah, but I mean, you know, the thing about it is, is that the way he sounds, the way he sounds, it's like, all right, he's sick. And he's yeah. sick with something that's highly contagious. You know what I mean? And the thing about it is, is that. Every single year around this time, every single year, like right before the weather breaks, the flu runs rampant through everyone. Like the flu just kicks everyone's ass. And the thing about it is, is that we never, ever, ever took that serious because we had flu shots. You know, you, it was arbitrary if you went every year or every other year and took flu shots. But now it's just this thing is like the flu on steroids. You know what I mean? Yeah. And and the fact that it's taken out so many people and it's ran through so many different populations is what has everybody afraid, you know? I mean, if yeah, anyone I mean, knows China's record on human rights and workers' rights, you know that it takes something serious to make Chinese production shut down. Right. And for me, I didn't start taking it serious until I saw how the stock markets were tanking in China because of that, because production stopped. Right. And I was like, yo, n- none of that happened during swine flu, bird right. flu, Ebola. Right. None of that even came close. Nothing right. stopped, nothing shut down, nothing even remotely close to that happened. But it was like, for me, it was it was reading the, the, the shaking of the trees in the distance. You know, you ever read uh, Sun Tzu's Art of War? He talks about like looking at, at the way the birds, you know, uh, leave the tree line in the distance. You can tell the size of the army coming your way. And I was like, right. yo, the stocks are tanking over this? China right. don't shut down for shit, B. Right. And they were shutting down. That's when I started to take it seriously. Yeah, that's that's a pretty good analogy. <laughs> well, for real. You know, also the 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 thing that made that made a lot of people start to take it seriously is when you know, because we're so distracted here, even myself included. You know what I mean? We're so distracted here. So the moment that they start shutting down major sporting events, concerts and things like that, like anything entertainment, once they start shutting things like that down, that's when you like people are like, oh, my gosh, what's happening? You know what I mean? Right. And the thing about it is, is that even though it's ran through like populations, like it totally like. It went through China, it it tore Italy up, tore the rest of Europe up, came over here, it's it's running rampant over here. And the thing about it here is Americans are so uh, bratty and arrogant that whenever you tell them no, like Americans don't want to hear no. So the moment that you tell them no, stay in your house, let it ride out. There's people that are, are are just like, no, I want to go to the park and play basketball. No, I want to go do what I want to do. It's like, I don't get it. They even have, they 
they there was two stories I read today of of pastors that got arrested for still holding church services after the right. the the after the orders went out for no public gatherings. Like, what are we doing here? You know, right, right. is that in New York though? No, not in New York. Well, this is the thing, bro. On if you go on Facebook and look at some of the way that uh, these fucking idiots are talking. Like, there's kids that are in, like, Missoula or some shit where, like, you're not in New York. You can't feel this energy. Right. Like, you, if you don't watch TV and you don't really, you know, there's places like that that got a couple hundred cases. It's like, oh, I'm invincible. Yeah, I felt that way, too, when we had fucking a couple hundred. Yeah. Over, now, now no, you, I felt like that when it was over in Wuhan and we were making Chinese food jokes. You know what I mean? Yeah, right, right. Yeah, yeah. But that's that's what it is. These people don't feel this fucking energy right now. It's That's crazy. how it is in the Bronx right now. Like all, all the little small congregations, the, these churches ain't stopping out here. They're still gathering. It, but that's so dangerous. That's the danger in that is like astounding to me. You if know? you've seen what the New York Post put out today, they showed a map by uh, by zip code of the uh, the severity of infection per you know population. Right. And uh, in my in my neck of the woods in the Bronx is is like deep purple. Like we got some of the highest concentration here too. Where you at? Nobody's paying. I'm I'm over here by uh by Grand Concourse and Fordham, like Fordham Heights. Okay. Oh okay. man, yeah, yeah. That's crazy, man. It's crazy. And then you know the thing about it is is that, you know, it's not only that you're putting yourself at risk, you're putting your neighbors at risk, you're putting at the 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 people at that that the the nurses in the hospitals, you put in the, the garbage men at risk, you put in the, the, the police officers, the EMS, the the bus operators you're putting so many people at risk by just being reckless with it you know what i mean like the transmission of this thing is so easy it's such an easy thing like i said the main thing i wanted to ask was can you even trace back to where you thought that you even got transmission and you can't even do that no probably not i mean in the past what i've been indoors for like a month and some change right and uh i mean just maybe any one of the like three or four runs I've made to the grocery store. But then again, that, you know, that's when you think about, when you analyze every weakness in like the security of this thing, like, you know, I had fresh direct deliveries coming in and bringing right. in bags from the outside. And, right. you know, yeah, again, who, who knows who packed this food or who packed, you know, the, the deli meats and all that stuff. So it can be, there's any, you know, a thousand points of vulnerability in like your virus protection. It's, it's not, you know, you know this is not so something we were prepared too? for. You know what's so crazy too? What? You could even went out to put your garbage out, touch your doorknob, True. and and that's that. You know what I mean? Right. It's as, as simple as that. But the the thing about it is is that because because you you it's it it to me it's like the same thing when you when you injure yourself, right? You never realize how much you need whatever part of it a part of your body that you need. When until it's injured, like you could stub your toe and you never even knew how important your toe was to your balance until it's stubbed. And now you have no balance. You know what right, I'm saying? Right. So yeah. it's like the same thing. When you come out of your building, you could have just went to go put the garbage out. You know what I mean? And and simple, something simple is take the garbage out and you could have touched your face. And it was like, boom, just like that. You know just what I mean? Like that. You guys, man, I'm going to have to go now. I'll let you guys talk it out, but you give me a panic attack. <laughs> I can't take this shit, bro. I've drank more in the last few weeks than I drank all year because my wife orders wine and shit, and she drinks with a, her girlfriend lives upstairs from us. So she's technically in the same house, but they come down here and they just drink. And I'm just like, yeah, pour me up. Let's go. I don't know how to. I don't know how to deal with this shit, bro. I really don't. So oh, when so, so when they're so when they're in the in in the house drinking, right, and talking, yeah. do you feel like Jack Tripper? I've been Jack Tripper my entire life. But this ain't the first time I live with two females. I'm just, my, man, my man lives at the Regal Beagle. Like, that, this is your life right now. <laughs> I go out back and kick it with Mr. Furley and shit. <laughs> He's his own Larry. <laughs> I I don't know. Sometimes I think to myself, I'm like, what did I do to deserve this? I don't know. Just, you know. That was very telling of your personality, by the way. You you, re you referenced Mr. Furley. I've always been a Mr. Roper cat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you, you you know, Mr. Furley was like a knockoff. You know that? Was he? 
Yeah, Mr. Like- Roper, Mr. Roper was first. Him, him, him and his yeah, wife. Yeah, Mr. Roper was first, yeah. Yeah, I know, but Mr. Furley had that swag, you know what I mean? What, what the scarf around the neck? You you he, a scarf he, around the neck? Yeah, trying to be fly and shit. You, you was, was, yeah, he, he came in there. He, he, on the low, he was really trying to get his dick wet. Is what it was. Yeah, listen, that, listen, man. listen. You see Mr. Furley, the rest of the world sees Barney Fife, man. You know Yo, what I mean? No, real shit, real shit. Oh, shit. Mr. Limpet. <laughs> That's a throwback cartoon right there. Yeah. That motherfucker is old as shit, huh? Wow. Oh. Hey, listen, what? you listen, you got to be proud to get here, my man. That's what I'm saying. <clears throat> I get. I hope I do. As old as you are, shit. I think Jay's about uh, my age, right? I'm a 36. Oh shit, you're younger than me, young yeah. buck. Yeah, look at you talking crazy. You know what I mean? Uh, <laughs> yeah. So 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 Jay on a on a on a on a on on the last couple of days, like you said, you felt like you you were in in like a, a, a heavyweight fight, you know what I mean? And uh so you've been like tired, but nothing crazy, like nothing like you breathing crazy or or No, nah, thankfully I haven't had anything where my, my respiratory system was affected. Not yet. I mean I'm 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 holding out, you know, nothing gets that far, but yeah, cause I mean, see, I'd be lying the- if I said I wasn't concerned. Yeah, because that's my main my main concern is, uh, you know, I've I've dealt with like upper respiratory infections and bronchitis and all of that stuff, and it's like, you know, just something like that is enough to scare you. So you know, if if it this is something that they say is like way worse than that, you know what I mean? And right, they, right. they they talking ventilators and all of that other stuff. So I'm like, that's 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 the main like being severely sick. No, that sucks. You know, nobody wants to be severely sick, but it's just the respiratory part is what has me like, you know, like very, very, very nervous and very. Yeah, that's like, what has me tripping. Like every every five minutes, I'm like testing how long I can hold my breath, make sure my lungs are still intact. Right, right, right. You know right, I mean? right. Have Let you me asked you a question? You do you smoke or vape or anything? No, I haven't done that in years. Okay. How about the um? Have you been like doing the warm liquid thing? The you know what I mean? The the teas yeah, and I coffees mean, and stuff yeah yeah for the most part it's usually just like room temperature water but every now and then i'll sneak like a like an armenian coffee in there or some tea just to kind of keep myself right. up because the, the, the fatigue man when the fatigue gets you yeah you know, i think uh yesterday i maybe slept i think i slept most of yesterday away be like i i woke up for, for my daughter's school stuff i made her a quick lunch stuffed her I went to sleep. I woke up again just to feed her. Went right back to sleep. I, I right. paid her no attention. I feel bad for this kid. Right, Thank God right. she has Xbox. Right. But see, here's the thing. That's your body telling you, man. I need, I need, I need to, 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 you know, work on this thing, man. That's that's your yeah. immune system fighting, man. You know? No, real talk. You know, when you're not taking care of yourself, your body will do it for you, <laughs> against your will at times. I mean, a lot of times, also, like what we what we see, like, you know, they, the thing about it is, is the media. The media sucks, and I'm and I'm not saying that the severity of what's going on is not what it is, but the media is not even bringing forth people like you. The media is only talking about the people who succumb to this. So they're talking right. about they're talking about uh, refrigerated trucks with bodies in them. Like, what is it that you're putting in people's heads? If I catch this, I'm going to end up in the back of a refrigerator refrigerated truck. If I catch this, I'm not going to be able to have a funeral with my family involved and they, they're just going to like, like, uh, you know, virtual, uh, you, uh, eulogize me and then burn me up. That's all they, that's all they did. They, they're feeding to the public. This is true. I mean, when you think about the way media has changed these days and especially the way periodicals disseminate information, right. it's all about clicks and, and everyone's in competition with everybody else. Even small time publications are, are given, you know, uh, uh, you know, long standing legacy publications like the New York Times, the L.A. Times, all that stuff. The Tribune, it right. gives them a run for their money, because as long as you can create a sensationalizing, t- uh, you know, headline. Right. Um, you'll get clicks and clicks and clicks. So everyone's in competition with each other. So, yeah, of course, they're going to put, you know, the, 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 the phrasing, the big meat out there for everyone to bite at. Right. But, uh, you know, for the most part, like I, I think there's kind of a purpose purpose behind it too aside from clicks i think if people i think there's a danger in downplaying it because if you say like hey this could be deadly but most people are going to be okay then most people are going to be like yeah whatever for example right the media is is giving it the the you know the doom and gloom treatment almost non-stop 24 7 that hasn't stopped my neighborhood from coming out and being stupid on a regular basis right right 
So, so yeah, so you're saying that they've been given doom and gloom and people are still going out. So if they didn't do still. doom and gloom, even more people would be Probably out and worse. about. Right. I it, think so. I mean, but right. that's that's my opinion on it. Right. But realistically, I mean, objectively, any one of us can look at the media outlets and the way they talk about this and be like, yeah, you know, maybe it was. it's one of those scenarios of the, uh, what, what's, what's the saying, what's the maxim, uh, a broken clock is right twice a day. Right, right? absolutely, yeah. They, they, they overhyped it for swine flu. They overhyped it for, for H1N1. Right. And this time they got it right because this time it has a, an aggressive transmission and it's it's pretty nasty for those that get the worst of it. Right. You know I mean, and in a shorter period, people are like, oh, yeah, the flu has killed more people. And I'm like, yeah, over a long extrapolated period of time. Right. This right. this is this is doing the work in a much shorter period. And I think people don't take that into account. Again, I'm not trying to, you know, doom and gloom it either. I don't want to take away the severity. I've already lost two friends to this. Right. I've got a couple family members that have it right now. Right. Right, right. Yeah. Those 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 two friends were they were they around your age? Both my age. One of them had a pre existing uh, uh, issue with lupus. Okay. And uh, yeah, I don't want to go too much in detail of that right now. Yeah, yeah of course. Kinda, yeah, I'm still yeah. kind of raw with it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, it's it's crazy, man. It's crazy. You know, condol my condolences to to I appreciate to the that. families, man. To you and to their families, man. And it's like it's it's. You know, our prayers go out to everyone who's dealing with this, because at the end of the day, what it sounds like to me is like, even if you get it, it's just a crapshoot. You know what I mean? It's like, it's like you're rolling the dice and you could, you could, you could, you could make it or you can break it. You know what I'm saying? You can crap out. And if you crap out, you know, it's also like what I was saying just on another level. What I was saying last time was this country's population is over 331 million, right? Right. Where we are with it, when it, even when it comes to like people that have it, that know that they have it, and people that have died from it, it's a small percentage of the population of this country. The 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 thing that's crazy is that the media is taking it and they're putting it so far up into everyone's face that it makes it look a lot bigger than it is right now. So my thing is my thing is is that if people would just slow down, take this time, sit in the house, do what they got to do, and let this thing die out, then we could be rid of it and move back into normal society. Yeah, I don't I don't see how normal is ever going to follow this. I really don't. I find difficulty believing that it could ever be so contained that it's no longer contagious. I see this wow. becoming like a like a like a seasonal thing almost. Like you'll start seeing like yo, like we're getting, you know, increases of covid again around, you know, fall, winter time and right. this will start seeing like 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 the rolling brownouts of, you know, quarantine type right. of thing right how but, could we ever sustain life though like with all these people out of work and not working with this shit like how the fuck are things ever going to be normal again yeah, i'm stressing about that too because I, I just took a, a a salary cut as well they slashed my hours and salary in half at my spot wow. i'm thankful i still have work i really am you know my, my bosses have always been good to me and you know i will always give them top quality work but man like that that was a that was a blow that, that was that, i took that real hard well, yeah, it's got to be, man. It's it's also too like you know what's happening right now is that um I know I know of family members and I know a couple of friends that are small business owners that are like you know, they're basically out of business right now. You know, and and, yeah. and uh a family member that owns a a a a contracting business was in between some jobs and because they weren't essential jobs those jobs had to stop you know and the thing about it is is that when there's no money coming in you know you or you have employees you have overhead and everything else like that and the money is just stopped so you know now your business is in peril true it's crazy you know it's crazy yeah I mean, you know, New York hasn't even really scratched the surface yet on uh, on making any headway with like a rent freeze. I mean, they've they've put a, a moratorium on evictions for three months, but right. they're talking about this thing lasting, you know, way past May. I mean, down to September. Right. 
Right. I mean, schools are, are a lot of schools saying that they might not even open till the rest to the end of the, the calendar year, not even the school year. Right. That's crazy. That's crazy. I know that they froze. Um, they froze uh, uh, mortgages. Mortgages for yeah. for three months. You know, but the thing about it is, what sucks is that if the landlords don't have to pay the mortgages, why would you be charging rent? Landlord's gonna landlord. <laughs> yeah, that, they're gonna have to come up with something to fix this at the end. Just you know, like uh, it's easier with the mortgages than it is with rent, but. Uh, they got to do something, man, because if nobody's working, where the fuck is this money coming from? Yeah, but that's exactly. what I'm saying, that stimulus Coast, check's only going to take you so far. This is what I'm saying, though, Coast. If I'm not worried about paying the bank for my property, why am I still charging my tenants rent? It makes no well, sense. Well, I mean, the obvious re- uh, reason is because most people consider that an income. And if their income is gone, they're looking for any means necessary to get that food on the table. I mean, is how it- are they going to wash their boats? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> you know how much it costs to fuel a yacht? <laughs> nah, but for real, like shit is going to change, man. We we were living high on the horse for a long time, a lot of people in America. So right. this is, uh, it's time to uh, face reality and I guess, you know, see who comes out, you know, who, who, who could like see. But prior to me having any success in life, if you want to even call what I have success, I lived off of shit. So I am comfortable in the shit. <laughs> was there was it were there corn and peanuts in it in the shit that you I, lived off I of? Mean, bro, there was all kinds of feces. You know what I mean? And I rolled around in it. This I don't want it, but undigested listen, bro. corn kernels. <laughs> like 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 uh Mr. Howdy, you know, Mr. Hanky. Hey, go. listen, listen, man. <laughs> he said he lived off it. I just wanted to know the variety of it that you lived off. You know? <laughs> I mean, there was there was a version of me that most people would never want to meet in life. Right. Like, you know, the the kind of guy I was like, I would I would break a car window out to steal the change. So it, I don't ever want to be that person again. But uh, I'm not saying that's what I'm going to do is, you know, where I'm at in life now. But who knows what the fuck happens of, say, a couple years of not working and no money and people, not just me, people that have nothing now. Uh, even a couple months from now, a couple weeks from now, you go fucking, what they say? Seven meals will change a man. <laughs> right. So you fucking, you know, you're going to be looking at a whole different spectrum here. Yo, they already started that shit in my neighborhood. About two weeks in, they started up with the car break-ins. Now, if you look at the Citizen app, in my neighborhood, you can see uh, on average a, a, a robbery, a stabbing, and a couple of uh, uh, breaking and enterings, uh, home invasions a day. Like, it's gone nuts over here. And, it's, and, it, and it took next to nothing. Because we were in this neighborhood, people are kind of already on the cusp of that level of poverty. And right. now, like, I've had to, like, run downstairs a couple of times just because, you know, some of these knuckleheads are just, like, running on top of cars like it's fucking Rumble in the Bronx. And I got to be Jackie Chan protecting my uncle's shit outside. Right. Yeah. You know what the funniest part is, is that just to, the, just to, uh, to like, kind of, like, reiterate that is when the whole crisis of, of, no toilet paper, no paper towels, no cleaning supplies. When that whole thing broke out, two people came to me and were like, yo, if you go to the, the stores in the middle of the hood, they got everything. And True. I was like, and I was like, why is that? Why is that? It's because people didn't have the money to empty this store out. That's true. You know, the funny thing is, it's like, yo, once, once, uh, you know, once the, you know, Upper West Side, Upper East Side Manhattanites realize that there's other things aside from like, uh, you know, Whole Foods, and once right, they discover seat right. towns and yeah. stuff, like we're gonna be in trouble. Yeah, <laughs> no, the funniest part. That's what I'm saying. Like, if you wanted something, any type of tissue or Lysol or anything else, you hit up a seat town, a Key Food, a Bravo, or something like that. Uh, you know, you hit up one of these stores, you find whatever you wanted to find, and it was. Yeah. Be- it's just because economically, social economically, in these parts of the, the city, these people don't even have the means to stock up in a way that everybody else is doing. So right, like right. trying to tell these people, hey, listen, stay in your house, don't leave the house and everything else like that. It's like, you know, these people are like, well, what am I going to, what, what, are, what are they supposed to do? You know what I'm saying? True. Yeah. Even I'm, I'm sandwiched in between like 
five decent sized grocers, some C Town, some Bravos, right. a couple pioneers. I got good access to food. Right. Anytime I've gone out for these places, like nothing's ever really empty except for like the eggs and the Lysol and everything right. else is pretty well stocked. Right. But man, once people start realizing that and start venturing outside of like their neighborhoods for supplies, because it's, gonna... it's, it's the big retailers that are getting hit. Yeah. The Walmarts, the Targets, those the are the stop, ones getting cleared the stop out. Stopping shops, the stopping yeah. shops and all of that stuff. The the shop rights and all of that. They're getting decimated but the 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 little local mom and pop supermarkets they're not getting like that but not yet at not yet yeah yet i think i think we gave out too many secrets on this podcast you know what i'm saying (laughs) i mean nah man if we could help people and that's what we got to do that's the least we can fucking do just be careful going to some neighborhoods in the bronx because just like uh you were saying before there's the hotbed right now so don't don't come here shit talking the locals just because you feel like you're big and bad you know slumming it and shit i'm saying like be respectful to poppy poppy might lead you to the right you know to the two-ply yeah, but I mean, you know, the 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 funniest, the funny thing out of this whole thing is, is that you like first and foremost, like I said, most people now know like how either a full of full of shit their kid is, or smart or stupid that their kid is right now because they're dealing with it up close and personal. You know what I'm saying? Uh, B. It's giving people a chance to like slow down and even just be reintroduced to their own family. You know what I mean? Because you got to think about it. Most most people, like even in my own household, I'm on totally different schedule than my wife and my kids. You know what I'm saying? So I don't even get to see them as much as as much as I don't have the FaceTime with them like I've had in this in this time that we've been you know quarantined and sectioned off into the house. So it's probably, it's, it's, it's just like every day is like a new uh, way for us to rediscover one another, just as a family, people that we, we live with, but you don't even see, you know what I'm saying? Right. No. Yeah. That's been, I've I've learned that I love hearing my daughter cuss. It's mad funny. (laughs) <laughs> we'll see what her like she was she was on the spectrum when she was younger it took a lot of therapy to get her off of that right um and to work through you know her, her emotional walls like when she would get upset she would lose access to like more than half of her vocabulary right. i would ask her baby like are the words up here in your head but they don't reach your mouth and she would like nod her head just kind of crying a little bit but like internally she all her anger was implosive right and and you know so getting her to even express her anger without crying was was a was a big deal And, you know, she used to have, you know, issues on the school bus. And, you know, one day she gets off the bus and and for the first time without crying, she just goes, Daddy, that girl was a fucker, bitch. And I lost it. I I thought it was was fucking hilarious because, A, she wasn't crying. B, she expressed her anger and was able to, like, use her words. And it was was an amazing moment. Wow. So now, like, when me and her are just chilling or whatever, we're like, we'll watch something. And she'll be like, Daddy, can I say it? And I'm like, yeah, yeah, let me hear you say it. (laughs) She'll say something. Now she's over here because she knows I was talking about her. Oh, wow. See, you know, nothing nothing is better. Nothing is better therapy than that old book of curse words is that why you curse so much coast it was therapy i guess yeah <laughs> I had to, had to get Joel, say what up real quick yo what up say, say what up fam what up fam <laughs> <laughs> yeah finish your taco <laughs> she can taste the tacos i can't it's mush i made tacos i can't even taste them i want to die this is bullshit don't say that. I wouldn't say that. It's coronavirus, right? You better take that back. Dear Lord Jesus, my friend does not know what he says. So, Fuck. so, so, so again, basically, the only the only medication you've been taking is is acetaminophen. Acetaminophen, pretty much, uh, and uh, and overdoing it on like uh, things with vitamin C, so emergency things like that. Any type of supplement. Yo, that's one of the things that just really went... hasn't been put out there. But like all the all the people I know that are like nurse staff and things like that, they're just right, like, yo, vitamin right. C. A lot of places are trying to treat it with vitamin C. There might be something to it. Don't take it as gospel, but vitamin C. No, listen, let me tell you, yo, Coast. I yo. went I went to the Target in Farmingdale, right? So nice. I, right there on one ten, I went to the to Target in, in Farmingdale, and um. I go to the vitamin section and they got everything stocked up, right? Soon as you get to the immune system booster from top shelf to the floor, that thing was empty. Clear. Not not a bottle of vitamin C in the place. I'm telling you, clear. And um, everybody's talking this elderberry thing. My wife got a bottle of this elderberry thing that she's making us take. Um, and vitamin C, everybody's saying that vitamin C is the way to go. 
um, to like boosting your immune system to help fight, you know, what's going on and everything else like that. So I just get the multivitamin. When I hear then, elderberry, I always yeah, think of El- Monty Python. Elderberry. If my wife gets that from my daughter, the elderberry <laughs> cough syrup when she was sick, I'm like, what the fuck is this shit? Elderberry. <laughs> kind of like old berry, right? What, what, what is it? Why, like, why I got to be elder? Can we get some fresher berries? Like, I, you know. Hey, listen, man. <laughs> they swear by it. Anything that these people are swearing by, you know what I mean? I, I saw a thing where people were saying, oh, you should uh, you should be walking around chewing on raw garlic. And I'm like, yeah, not raw really. Garlic. Yeah, raw garlic. That shit ain't helped me none yet. And that's like, that's what I idly do. I'm, I'm, I'm always chewing on garlic and raw ginger. Right, that right. Help me for shit. Oh, man. Why? I mean, pe- people can people can you know throw their you know Karen essential oils treatments at you or whatever, but like go with what fucking works. I don't know. <laughs> well, see, the thing about it is, is that a lot of what's happening with the respiratory systems is inflammation. So everything that the people are trying to tell you to do is anti-inflammatory and anti-inflammatories. So right. that's 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 the basic thing, like trying to like drink turmeric and ginger and things like that. Garlic is definitely a good anti-inflammatory. So, you know, uh, pineapple yeah, is that's all the is, shit I got very... here. I'm, I'm trying to tune into my my inner Erica Badu, and this shit ain't helping me. I still got the Rona. Like, oh uh, man, your coochie's got, got to smell <laughs> nice over there, though. Yeah, shit. <laughs> <laughs> so, you make a candle of your of so, your lungs after. This. <laughs> so, uh, I just wanted to. Can I switch gears for one second? Since you guys are hip hop aficionados, uh, all right. Sure. They're saying that this uh this J Electronica thing is like uh this is like the second coming of 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 great hip hop here. That shit was booty cakes, if you ask me. Just asking. I mean, you know, I, I I've seen like a lot of people online saying that this was like masterpiece theater. You know what I mean? I've got I had mixed feelings on it. You know, we're used to the J Electronica that we got from like 2000 to like 20, you know, 2015 or whatever. Right. You know, a lot of those, you know, had a very boom bap feel. He didn't really stray from that formula for a long time. So all like the little mixtape or leak things that we got, that's what we were expecting. Right. Um it took me a while to warm up to this. At first my initial reaction was like, "Oh, what the fuck?" Maybe there was like two moments where I was like, "Okay, this is cool." For the most part, I was upset. Then I gave it about three or four more listens. Now, I'm not saying I'm in love with it, but I understand what he's trying to do. Right. And I feel like, in a sense, maybe it's not like a second coming. People always hype shit up. For right. me, though, I kind of feel like he was trying to go in the direction of what Tribe was doing in the face of the mainstream boom bap shit at the time. Right. Where they weren't trying to go necessarily with it. They took it like in a kind of different direction. They wanted something a little bit more organic and not necessarily adherent to anything that was popular. Right. And I think he did it. I think even in the subject matter that he and Jay explored in it was, I wouldn't say brave, but like most cats wouldn't have even dared to just like try to keep it what people would say, like, oh, too lyrical for commercial albums or whatever. Like, I, I appreciated what they did with it. I, it. It's not my flavor. Maybe not as of yet. Maybe I need to hear a little bit more or whatever. But I, I, I'm, I'm kind of with Phil initially. I was off put. I was like, what the fuck is this granola shit? Like, I'm, I'm like, I, I couldn't, I couldn't dig it. I, I, I didn't absorb it. I sat with it a few more times because even shit that I hate, I have to give it more chances just because I'm, I already know I'm a hater for anything that's popular right off the bat. Right. I mean, I, I to be honest, and you know, I've never, I've never, I've never, ever, 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 ever admitted this that it took me a while to even accept ready to die because everybody was on it so hard. Mm -hmm. Like at the time when he came out, it was just like, I was just all Wu-Tang or nothing. You know what I'm saying? And and, and, and it was like, everybody was like, yo, he's like the king of New York. And I'm like, wait a minute. Are you kidding me? You know what I mean? I never really admitted that because he became... One of my favorite, one of my all-time favorites, once I delved into what was happening with Ready to Die. You know what I'm saying? But it it took me a while. So I understand exactly what you're saying. The the thing that I wanted to know was, was the production on, on this record the thing that threw you or was it just the content? Both for me. It sounded like somebody recorded it in their mom's basement 
poorly to me. A lot of it the way I don't know if that's what they were trying to go for with the mixes on that shit. But the shit did not sound like, you know, it had Jay-Z on every record, but it didn't sound like a Jay-Z record. Right. right. I think the lo-fi quality was intentional. I think, you know, when you think back to like uh, like the Mad Lib albums, the Quasimodo joints, how they all kind of sound a little overly compressed, kind of dragged through the dirt a little bit, like old vinyl. I think that's what, what the intention was. It was meant to sound like some some old, like like late 80s, early 90s buzz tape stuff, you know, a right. lot of noise in the mix. Um, I don't think the production was super great but then again that's because you know we're all from that era of like boom bap and it has to sound a certain way and i had to really open my mind with it a few times and and some of you know like the soulful samples like i I was starting to dig after a while but that's what it was mostly who who, did he have any notables on his on his on his production actually i didn't even i didn't even bother looking at the liner notes i was just kind of busy on trying to absorb the sound whether or not it was something i could get with okay me neither i i was i don't know i was so off put by it just because I I don't know like if you look at it on paper and you look at the way it was hyped leading up to this I, not that we even knew this was coming the way it did but like the 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 anticipation I had for a J Electronica album after all the shit I heard leading up to this and then I was given this and it was like fuck you like why'd you do this to me right like, what the fuck? <laughs> you know what I'm saying like yeah. And not to say I was even a, a huge Jay Electronica fan, but he definitely had his moments. Like he, he definitely had enough moments to me where I would want to hear a full album with him, A, and then B, when I found out the full fucking album had Jay-Z on every fucking track. I'm like, oh, this there's no way this could be bad. And then I listened to it and it's like, wow, there is a way. It was like <laughs> So so now here's my thing. Does Jay-Z's involvement in this album and this album being being like a dud to you, does that go on a stain on Jay Z's record? No, you know it's weird because it's not a Jay album and it's not a Jay Electronica album to me, sound wise. Like the way it's, it doesn't sound typical to either one of them, which a lot of people could say is is creative. Man, maybe it's just not for me. Yeah, and I don't no, think it's I, a minus. Yeah, it, it's gotta it's gotta have to be. But I I honestly to to be honest with you, Jay lost me. For the last few records, anyway. So I mean, Jay Z. Like I mean, I haven't felt Jay Z the way I did in the beginning in a long fucking time. Right. So, for so me, I when, I, when in those instances, I always think you know, just because of the way I think, I, I'm always like, are, are the lyrics disappointing because of me or because of him? Did I not progress enough as an adult or, or with the artistry that I just can't relate now? Or is it, you know, an actual failing on their part? Because I know Jay on multiple occasions has had to, to allude to the fact, Jay-Z, by the way, has had to allude to the fact that he's had to dumb it down on multiple occasions just so people can just kind of, you know, keep him palatable. And he kind of is the king at, you know, following what's popular at that time and acclimating to it so he can remain relevant. Most rappers wouldn't even bother trying to do that. You know, that's why a lot of cats got left in the past. I mean, a lot of people that you love today, I won't even name my name just in case this man comes and kills me, but like, you know, they, they uh, you know, it's just, uh, it's, it's, they, they might uh, to an extent of their career might help influence the time, but then the times leave them behind when they refuse to change with, you know, the, the, the bigger waves of, of the, the movement of the music. And so, you know, even with what I was expecting from Jay Electronica lyrically, I was like, is this disappointing to me because I don't feel he's coming as hard or am I not relating to it because I'm not on this wavelength yet? With Jay-Z, I was like, oh, man, he kind of like he went out there a little bit with these rhyme schemes and wasn't trying to sound like super hood or thug. It was like uh, he was trying to keep up with what he thought Jay Electronica was doing. And I appreciated that. That's why I can't call it like an L in his record in terms of like good, you know, album releases. I think that to be honest with Jay-Z, to be honest, I think that Jay-Z is very, very capable of putting words together. But I think that because him as a brand and as a business is so corporate and whitewashed right now, you're never going to find those rhyme schemes that come across with the slap in your face, like content that he was known for you're always going to get that whitewashed corporate version of him of him rapping and then he'll and then it'll be like well this is growth this is artistry but actually it's it's a protection of where he is as a businessman you know what i'm saying uh, 
I mean, I, I know I get where you're coming from. I feel like he's too big to have to worry about that. I feel like he can pull a 50 cent and do that like before I self-destruct album and be like, I'm just making whatever the way I want it without worrying about having too many radio hits. Right. I feel like Jay could definitely do that. If he wanted to tomorrow, he can give us a full DJ Premier produced album, but he's not about that. He just kind of wants to stay relevant, yeah, even but though that, he could do it. That's the thing, though. The thing about it is if you... Who are you actually trying to appeal to? Are you trying to appeal to the people that love you and revere you from the past? Or are you trying to re- appeal to the people that are relevant right now? Like, that's, that's why the I thing said hip hop, though, like, like we're a fickle bunch when you really think about it. Like we can show support for an artist, but we're always going to compare Nas's entire catalog to Illmatic. We're always going to compare Jay-Z's entire catalog to Reasonable Doubt. Like we're not going to even try to give any wave, uh, any, any, uh, any, um, give any like, what's, what's it called? G- give any consideration to where they've taken it since then you know what i mean like we might even give it like oh you know the next album was all right but like we do that to artists a lot so it's you know i can kind of yeah, understand wh- when they're like why the fuck am i doing it for y'all anyway you're gonna you're gonna compare it to my first shit and it'll never be good enough right but here's the but the thing about it is i respect growth because at the end of the day you know if you come out and you your first album comes out when you're 19 and you you your most recent album comes out and you're 39 if you're still rapping like 19 at age 39 it's like where's the growth in you as a person so again i respect growth i respect the person saying i see the world through a grown man's eyes i see the world through a father through a husband through a business owner i see i i understand that what I'm saying is you're never going to hear Jay-Z like going out like on the limb and on the ledge where he would have gone in 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 years past. That's my Who's thing. to say where he would go though? How do who how the fuck do we know? But I I do know I heard uh I was listening to an interview with Dame Dash and Dame was saying shit about Jay without saying Jay's name and he was like, you know, some dudes change when there's money in the room. And it just goes into what you were saying about, you know, what he's willing to say now. Right. Because he might compromise what he has. But, you know, it's hard to it's hard to put yourself in that position, man. When you when you are that fucking rich and when you do you're married to Beyonce and the people you're around, you fucking change, man. Right. You change. Right. You're not the same fucking guy anymore. So how could you know, everybody says the same shit about Eminem, too. It's like well, the difference between now and when he wrote that first album or even the second album is light years between like he's not the same dude anymore right we're not gonna get the same product right and that's why you know i said before it's like it's just not for me it's not i can't fuck with it It, i don't i don't know i just want the version of the artist that i love but i guess that's selfish and not realistic (laughs) yeah but you gotta understand when you when you have a guy when you have a guy that's now dabbling in politics he's now dabbling in 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 like artist representation he's trying to be a force uh politically once he's trying to be a force politically outside the realms of hip-hop even when he comes back to hip-hop there's such a whitewashed version because now you don't want to say anything that's going to have people lose lose uh value in your credibility that you've established on the outside of hip-hop that's why i'm saying he I think I kind of see where you're going with that in terms of like uh, like avoiding backlash that would hurt his efforts in right. politics and right. policy. I I, I kind of feel where you're going with that. Right. I don't necessarily agree that it's like a whitewashing, but definitely trying to make sure that you don't negate the progress you've made right. with things you say. Because right. then nowadays, you know, with, with the way it works, you know, the Facebook court of public opinion, right. you know, everyone's canceled for every little thing they say. Absolutely. To an extent, I feel like some of that type of shit is justified. I mean, you, you say some racist shit, then you know, fuck what happens to you. That's not oh, my yeah. problem. Yeah, yeah, but, yeah. You know, in terms of what I feel like if someone wants to graduate their brand to something that has more of a direct and larger scale impact, then, yeah, maybe, you know, I feel like that absolutely might shape the things they say, whether it's it's stifling or just changing directions altogether in their content. Right. Yeah, definitely. I mean, you guys are both right and you're both wrong and you both can shut the fuck up now. Cause right <laughs> now hey, Eight minutes. I don't like to push it past an hour. Not because of uh, the conversation goes places. I like that, but 
uh, for technology's sake, we haven't gotten to the point where we could guarantee that we'd be good after an hour, and I don't want to push it. So <laughs> let me let me ask you a question, Ghost. Right before we leave, all right. All right. Uh, my question to you is: Did you gain any insight into the COVID nineteen situation by talking to, to 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 this brother today? Yes, I I uh, well, this is the thing about that. Uh, I've mindfully been trying to only put my shit out on social media. I'm not really ingesting. I'm more just putting what I want to say out there. And I haven't been watching the news. And I, I've really been careful about what I'm taking in because I find like it makes me feel better to not. So sitting here for the last hour has been informative, sort of encouraging that, you know, somebody I know has it and they are feeling better, you know, not better, but feeling like not dead and they're not on a fucking incubating machine in a hospital. It's encouraging, but yet still scary. So, I mean. I think it was it was it was definitely informative and I think a lot of people will 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 take something away from it and I'm glad we had the chance to do it with you. Uh, I appreciate that. Yo, appreciate yeah, you coming sure. appreciate you sharing with us, Jay. For real, man. It was an honor for me, man. I really enjoyed this. Thank you all. Thank you, bro. All right, Fats. I think I think it's time to uh to to put episode eight in the fucking books and right, uh right. I don't know when we will return next. Seems like we're on a different schedule now that we both have some more free time on our hands. So uh, with that being said, this is my name is Coast and that is Fats and that is Big Chief Smash. And we are fucking out, yo. Peace. Peace. Peace.